I've come to a conclusion. Textures are the frosting of the photo editing world. They're there to hide mistakes and make something look much more impressive than it actually is. I'm Abby Esparza, and I recently had to whip up a promo piece for our new hand-painted backdrops pack, and I realized the whole image just came together super fast, and I was uh, more happy with it than I needed to be. It took like 30 minutes, and I was uh, satisfied. So I put together a list of my top four tips for using and layering textures in a way that looks like something other than an oversaturated mess. These are just my go-to techniques. Also, fun fact, the techniques I'm using in Photoshop today can be applied to textures in a Affinity Photo 2. Everything is very one for one. So if you want to get the most out of your textures, try using brushes with a similar paint type to that texture. Basically, there are going to be two main brushes you want to stockpile, watercolor and oil paint. But you want dynamic brushes, not stamp brushes, and that's the main thing here. Even if you don't have a tablet, it's crucial to have brushes with a dynamic flow rate. That way you can actually recreate the textures and the stroke patterns of the medium you're trying to mimic with these brushes. Uh, these types of brushes will be the foundation of everything I talk about, so I actually put together a free mini paintbrush set for you. You can find the link down in the description uh, just in case you didn't have any. Uh, they may not work well with Affinity Photo, but really the default Affinity Photo brushes work great for this, uh, so all you AP users are already set. Creating mixed media backdrops for a portrait is my go-to when I need something super quick, so these textures are great for that. In our new pack, there are these fantastic black and white textures that I'm kind of obsessed with. They have this raw edge that usually gets cropped out of most textures, but by keeping it, we can use the whole texture just set to multiply to create a really nice, just blocked out background. One of the easiest ways to frame a subject is by just placing a big old shape right behind their head. But the texture is a good as is, no need for any masking. Right below that, I'm going to place another full canvas texture and doing some quick color correcting. Also, the background is now basically done because using these textures as the canvas itself is a great option, specifically for heavy mixed media pieces. But we can still uh, apply some very satisfying brush stroke textures. For this, I usually recommend setting the texture to multiply. Next, we'll add a layer mask and invert it using Control slash Command I, uh, turning that black. With this texture and one of our oil paint brushes, we can start applying it to the canvas by masking it in. Remember to adjust the flow rate of your brushes to create those nice chunky paint strokes. We want them nice and chunky. I prefer to follow the brush stroke pattern, especially if the original texture is oil paint. If you're aiming for a really heavy mixed media look, it's best to work with the textures as much as possible, not against them. Multiply is best for any texture you want to appear blended over the highlights and not into them. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try out other layer modes. Divide can be really, really fun with textures. Before I decided on a blue, pink, and then eventually neon orange color scheme, I was going to go with something more dark with a very stark white paint pattern, all done by just layering textures set to divide over top one another. All the textures I'm using today are from our new hand-painted texture backdrop pack. We made them ourselves. Uh, they're super awesome. It contains over 180 textures, the painted artboards being my favorite. We also like how kind of like dingy gray they are. They'll be down in the description if you want to check those out. But let's dive into one of my favorite settings, Blend If. It's my favorite tool. I talk about it all the time, but it's going to bring out the best of these textures. You'll want to double click on the layer to open its blending options. And right here, we're going to focus on Blend If. If you hold down Alt, you can split and adjust these toggles. They control how the layer blends based on the values. Uh, pretty easy, but powerful stuff. With the top slider, you can blend the values within the texture itself and the bottom sliders. They blend based on the values under the layer. Both options are super duper handy here. Without splitting the toggles, you can pull away the lighter values in the texture. And this makes your brush strokes look just really nice and sharp and defined, uh, just the way we want them. Once you're satisfied, split the toggles to just get a smoother transition between those blended and unblended areas, creating kind of a transition. And you can use the bottom slider to blend out those darker values. Here I blended away the strokes overlapping the existing dark background, making things look a lot less uh, you know, flat layer mode. And if you want some extra texture, uh, you can blend the texture based on the higher values underneath. 
So in this case, it's going to bring out all that thick paper texture from the watercolor uh, canvas. It'll really make the underlying texture pop. Oh, and don't forget, you'll want to bring texture like this all over your subject so we can bring some above it as well. I like to focus more on the bottom of the canvas where the subject hits just to add a bit of solid color to act as a bit of framing, almost a slight border. Now this is all good for oil paint, but watercolor will require a bit more finessing in the highlights, so a lot of blendifying. And a softer brush to unmask it, obviously. I don't even have a specific watercolor brushes, I use smoke and soft and grungy brushes, mostly because I like to rely more on thicker paints, so I'm just not much of a watercolor person. But even when relying on blend if, we still want to place textures so their brush stroke matches the angle of the surface. You're also going to want to use curve layer adjustments, especially with watercolor textures like these. Let's set the watercolor texture to multiply, this new one here, and now add a curves adjustment. We're going to bring up this top anchor to the left to blend all of that excess background away. We can also fade or darken the pinks by bringing down the shadows. Finally, we can place an anchor in the middle here and adjust that to refine those watercolor splotches. This is how you can still get a lot of control while using pre-made paint textures like this, so you're not hand painting everything. But that does bring us to overpainting. Overpainting is what's going to sell this texture and bring everything together. We're going to place layers of overpainting on top of both the background and subject to start and just kind of like merge and combine the two. This is super easy. We're just going to grab an oil paint brush, a thick and uh, chunky one, and lower the flow rate so it mimics more of a dry brush. Sample a color from the canvas by holding Alt slash Option and just start painting well-defined strokes, ideally places that will create some contrast. So we'll take this hot pink of the hair and drag it onto the black. We'll bring some light blue from the shirt into the hair and onto that black as well, as well as colors from just like the background. I like to keep the strokes vertical and uh, relatively consistent in size or consistent in brush stroke at least and create as many layers as you need. Mostly all set to normal. We want these to be solid strokes of color. I like to bring some of that brush texture onto the skin by sampling the skin and painting directly onto the area sampled. So you'll start getting a really nice, you know, actual oil paint effect, unlike a bad filter. When I think of paint, I think of defined raised texture. So we're trying to mimic that kind of surface. We can also start to outline the subject with some thinner paint strokes, bringing some of their skin tone, hair color, and shirt color right onto the canvas. You want to bring that paint texture onto just really everything, even if it's just very subtle. We also want to use this brush to mask away streaks of our subject, in fact. If you want a heavy mixed media effect, I'd avoid having your subject have those like really nice, clean, sharp edges that the pen tool might make. So we want to rough up the subject's edges and bring some of those background colors right directly onto our subject just by masking it out. This doesn't have to be your last step. You can create these layers over top any new objects, text, or color grades just as you go. I'm actually going to jump into my actual PSD for this to show you. So here everything is very similar. I do have these painted dot patterns. They were just painted using a plain old oil brush and made sure they were filled with contrasting colors and some have this gold texture painted using the same brush and my go-to gold uh, colors, which are these ones. But I want to point out how after doing my final color grade, pushing those blues and turning the pinks into neon orange, I did one more round of overpainting, this time on a layer over the rest of the composite and sampling from those new colors. This super vibrant orange is the primary color I wanted to uh, use as the last accents with splatters of a lighter kind of like cyan color as well. I love a last blast of color. Uh, this is just also by far my favorite part. It's been a while, so I just wanted to come back with something just kind of simple and to the point, a nice organized list. Don't forget the free brushes down in the description and check out our new own paint texture bundle. If you have any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them because I'm kind of strapped for ideas. Also join me on Instagram. I mostly just post memes, but I am intending to post other things soon as well. God forbid we have fun. 
in the new AI apocalypse. Thank you guys so much for watching. A like if you like, subscribe if you really like. I'm Abby Esparza. See you guys very soon.